Hi, and welcome to a quick tutorial of GPT Studio. GPT Studio is a short project I worked on myself over the holidays. In the holidays, I like to do like small programming uh, uh, projects, just, you know, to think about something completely different than my own academic work, but kind of keep the mind active. And I don't work on them for more than an hour or 45 minutes a day, mainly because it's the holidays. I want to hang out with my kids, with my friends, with my wife. I shouldn't be on a computer all that much, really, to be honest. But this holiday, I worked on GPT Studio, which takes the power of Chat GPT and brings it into our studio. I just wanted to see whether I could make this work specifically for myself and then maybe share it for others. And so what happened is I made a little uh, package that kind of worked, but it isn't really a perfect art package because I'm a scientist, not a developer. And then someone else, James Waden, James Wade came by and I don't know him, but he started to uh, contribute improvements. And we basically struck up like this informal com collaboration where we make this better and we even spun off a second little art package that's called GPT Tools. It has tools for people that develop software in R. You should check that out as well. I'll include the link in the description. But for now, I just want to take you through installing the package. So here there's the install code, which I can copy and then go to our studio and then paste and run it. Let's run this now. And well, it tells me I've already installed it because it's on my machine. Uh, and so here we are on my machine. I'm going to show you some of the features of uh, GPT Studio. And one of the neat features, I think, as someone that wants to work and write and basically edit documents in our studio is that I can do things like spell check and grammar check and improve the style of writing. So let me just write a few sentences with some errors and then we're going to see how this works. This, this is a sentence with some errors in it. Actually, it might have more than a few because I am very dyslectic. C, well, there's quite a few errors actually. Some of them are intentional, but let's see what it does if I try to check spelling and grammar. Okay, so yeah, look here, I don't see it's running. It's asking GPT for help. Oh, Actually, it was already done. So it replaced the text I selected uh, with new text without spelling errors. Now, there's more it can do. Another example of what it can do is make, uh, change the style of your writing from passive to active. And that can be really useful because I find myself and other academics often write in a very passive sense. Uh, and that's really not engaging for the reader. So let's try and write a passive sense sentence. Now, I'm not a native speaker, so the sentence that comes out may actually not be passive. So let's see. The woman, the woman ran the mall. Let me just rewrite this for a second. In order to Let's see what it does with this. And ask it to change the text into an active voice. Asking Jupiter. And then I will change the sentence into the one random model in order to improve her writing, which you may or may not prefer. But it's something you could try. Now, it doesn't do just do, uh, you know, writing help though for me that's a big thing as i'm dyslectic right and actually it's one of the features i had thought uh, our studio wasn't or quattro docs or our markdown weren't really compatible yet with or competitive yet with something like word or google docs but it can also do other things now let's suppose we have a data set right with a variable x in it and it's a bit of a skewed variable like let's make x and let's make it a chi-square distributed variable. Let's give it 10,000 observations and two degrees of freedom. Now, what does that look like? I kind of know because I work a lot with this kind of data. Let's make it, but you may not. So let's make a histogram with 50 breaks to show you what a variable with a chi-square distribution and two degrees of freedom looks like. 
looks like this. Right. Now, if you want to know the central value, we could take the mean of x, and it would be 2. Right. And we can take the median of x, and it would be quite a bit lower than 2. But we may actually be interested in what's called the mode. The mode is the most frequent number. Now, x is continuous, right? So the most frequent number may not be the actual number we're looking for. In the case of a continuous distribution, it may be what we're looking for is actually the peak of the density. But R doesn't have a built-in function for the mode. So let's use chat GPT within uh, GPT Studio to make such a function. Let's ask it to do that. Right, uh, right. Um, R function that computes the mode of a con continuous variable, which is the peak of the probability density. And it can do more complex stuff than this, but this is what it can let do now. Okay. Fix some typos. Could let it do that for me as well, I guess. But I won't for now. That's asking a bit too much of my own planning skills. Write code from prompt. It will take the prompt, which should be very explicit, right? You should tell it to use R code because we're sending this to OpenAI, right? Where where you have to make an account to use Chat uh, GPT Studio and Chat GPT itself, uh, and then we're getting back response from them. The computers over there, the servers, they don't know we're we're doing this from R, right? They're just accepting queries from all over the world and sending them back. Also, right, this means we're sending the query over to them. So don't query them for information on data that should remain private, right? Because we're sending it over to them. And if you install GPT Studio, we will warn you and refer you to their uh, terms of use, which explain that they use these queries to improve the model. But also, it's sent there via the internet and under privacy law, some data you may have as a scientist you may not be able to send it over there. So think about what you send over there. There's a warning in our package. There's terms of use you agree to, but it's just good to keep in mind. For now, we're going to ask it something benign, something non-private, namely to write as an R function. And it's writ written a function for us, right? This is an R function. Does it run? Actually, it does, without errors. And it actually added, added comments as well, and it computes the density of x, then it finds the peak of that density and it returns the value of x that's equal to that peak. Well, that's actually the mode. So let's try, try this new function on x and see what it gives us. And it tells us that the mode actually of this continuous variable x is 0.4. So this was a simple function, but you can imagine making more complex functions. Uh, there's a second package we developed, which is an extension to GPT Tools or GPT Studio. It's called GPT Tools. And let me check quickly whether I've got it installed. I do not. So we can go over here and go to GPT Tools, linking to it uh, from uh, uh, directly within uh, the page for. GPT Studio, and let's install it. Why am I going to install GPT Tools? Because it's going to quickly show you what it can do for you. So, okay. There we go. And it's downloading, installing, and it finished installing correctly. Now, what it has are tools for developers. And one of the tools it has is actually to write a readme page based on the Roxygen uh, function or package uh, for functions you've written yourself. So maybe you want to make sure you document your functions. GPT may be able to help you. So it can, for example, add a Roxygen to the function. I'm selecting the function. I've just let it write, write for me, write the mode function. And I'm asking GPT tools, this, this other package we've developed to write a Roxygen for a function. If you don't know what a Roxygen is, then this isn't for you yet, but a Roxygen is basically a couple of lines in front of a function that once you build a pack package or you build uh, you run Roxygen, it will build readme pages for or help pages for functions that have a Roxygen. Anyway, 
the developers among you will recognize this. It actually is a rather correct uh, description of what the function does and, uh, you know, can help you develop things quicker. Make sure you document. Anyway, these are some of the tools we've been developing for you and uh, I'm super excited about them and I'm super excited to see people use them. So give them a try. The links to both packages are in the comments and let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye.